In our next session, we will hear from the Australian Capital Territory and how they're handling some of the internal challenges against open data. Uh, please welcome to the stage, Christo Norman. Thanks for that, Marcus. Uh, I, I realize I'm just before lunch, so uh, I'll try and be as quick as I can, uh, respecting that we've been going a bit over time. I would like to start off by stating uh, something that I've heard a lot uh, when I've been working with people across government, and that is that open data sucks. P people tell me that it creates more work for them. People tell me that it makes them more accountable. And why, why do I want to be more accountable? It's going to make my life hard, right? And uh, to be honest, we, we've been struggling with this as an issue, and we've been trying to figure out what we're meant to be doing to fix it. Maybe we're coming at it from a different angle from you guys as well. So, uh, you know, we have different drivers from you guys. So, for example, in Australia, we think, as a rule, that our, we can trust our government. We think that uh, our government is trustworthy, that uh, we don't really need to have the same degree of oversight that you guys appear to, to uh, often have over your own, uh, over your own jurisdictions. So. Transparency isn't one of the issues that we can really use as a driver to bring across uh, the value of open data. And another driver that people often have, and I, and I was hearing this yesterday a few times, and Bristol in particular picked it up, and that was that in times of economic hardship, open data makes sense. You know, the, 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 your jurisdiction is really struggling with money, the budgets are being slashed. I know, we can use open data as a way to uh, continue having good service delivery to our uh, community. Well. We've got money, so it's not really an issue for, for us here, uh, for us in, in Australia. So we don't have those drivers. We, we don't think that uh, people need open data to demonstrate transparency, and we don't have cost as one of the drivers for us. So it's been really hard to figure out how we can actually push the value of open data um, across government. Now. It's not as if we haven't been trying. Uh, you know, we, we started off and going, yeah, open data, it's a great idea. Let's, dri let's drive it by uh, developing a policy. I mean, we're all bureaucrats. It's, it's pretty good, right? It's easy to, to write a policy. We've created a policy that says open data is a good idea, that uh, open data is going to benefit the community. It's something we should do, that we should uh, pr be proactively publishing all our data sets. People have been fighting it. We've got a chief minister who which is a bit of a, a cross between a, a state governor and a city mayor. And he, he's, he's pretty tech savvy. And he's, uh, you know, he, he thinks that open government is a good idea, but still we've been struggling. We've also got a really good uh, product uh, or t the tools to do it. We, we've been with Socrata now for, uh, since 2011. So we've been using the Socrata platform for ages. So we've, we've got the, the kit, we've got the, the wherewithal, but what we haven't had is the drive. And so we thought about this for a while, and we thought, you know what the problem with open data is? Open data, people don't have skin in the game with open data. You talk to the business owners, they don't have skin in it. In fact, they've got the opposite. They've got skin in the game, all right, to make sure that open data doesn't work for them. So we've been thinking about this, and we've been trying to figure out ways to make it so that they do have skin in the game. And how are we doing this? Well, we've started thinking about it and we've, we've decided that we're going to go primal on them. We're going we're to go right down to basics. Tell me, um, just, a, just a quick show of hands, how many people here know um, the uh, Maslow's hierarchy of needs? Yep, so that would be about 99.9% .9 of you. So you know how uh, Maslow talks about being able to meet the base needs of, a, of an individual before you, they can uh, reach self-actualization? Well, we think the same holds true for open data. We think that before you can fully realize the value of open data to the community, you, ne you first need to um, demonstrate the value uh, within government itself. So you, you need to get primal. And for us, that means that the first level, in, if you replace Maslow with open data, is to make the life of the data owner easy. You need to think WIFM. I don't know if WIFM's a, a phrase you guys are familiar with here in the US, but in Australia, WIFM is what's in it for me? As a data owner, I want to know what's in it for me. So 
instead of talking to people about open data now, uh, I'll give you an example of something that we've done recently, and that's uh, I, I went and talked to the uh, Territory and, and Municipal Services that we've got in Canberra, and uh, we saw that every month, and I'm sure this rings true to all of you, every month they have a number of data owners, they extract data from their uh, databases, then they go, okay, I'll massage that data into a report that looks good. Um, I know PDF looks good. Uh, and then I'll email that uh, new report to the, uh, the communications team, to, the, to our uh, webbies, and they will then schedule that and then they will uh, post it. Elapsed time, you know, three to five days every month. Uh, amount of effort required for the, those uh, various data sets to be um, massaged, you know, between five and ten hours. Amount of drudgery and boringness that they do every month, really high. So we didn't talk about open data to them. We said, hey, we can make your lives easier. We can, we can automate this data we, um, extraction. We can make that really easy. The report, we got you covered. All you need to do is to uh, show us the sorts of formats that you need, and you can create your own report here. And um, to load it, load it to the, to the website, man, easy. No problem. In fact, it's all going to be automated. So you never need to worry about this again. So we made their lives easier. And actually, by association, we found that we also um, made them look better too. So all of a sudden, they were able to go to their manager and say, hey, boss, look, I've got this uh, great new process. All of a sudden, I don't have to do these things. The number of errors that we're putting out are dropping. And um, now I'm enjoying work more, a little bit more. And um, uh, now I've got time to do some of those other things that, we, that you've got as my priorities. We, we didn't talk about open data, though, at all in any of that. So that was our first level, and that's our first base layer. Our second layer isn't about the individual within an organisation, within you, the jurisdiction or government. It's about the organisation itself. Uh, we, let me tell you something crazy. We, we've got uh, a department with two groups in it. Well, it's more, more than two groups, but I'll, I'll reference these two in particular. One of them finds it easier to get information, not from uh, their colleagues across the corridor, but they'll go to the uh, Commonwealth of Australia, the federal government, to get that data instead. Why? Well, because it's easier. There's these natural silos that have been created over time. And uh, that's a problem. So we've then talked to the, our director generals and said, look, we, we've got this uh, problem with all these data, data silos, and we think we can help solve them for you. So we're now helping them automate that, uh, um, the publication of those data sets so that it can be used for federal reporting uh, and making it accessible to anybody within government at all. So first of all, we've helped the individual. Then we've helped uh, the, uh, the organization itself. And only then can we start thinking about helping the community. And you know what? In fact, we, we don't need to worry about the community, what, is what we've discovered. Sure, we've run hackathons and had programmers in and they've developed uh, apps and things like that. But what we've realized is that when we're focused on the lower two foundations, that happens by default. Uh, I'll give you a, a really, really quick example. We've had uh, uh, one of our volunteer communities, they were looking at uh, uh, the, the burgeoning number of data sets that we've got that, that came out of TAMS, our municipal services that I mentioned earlier. And uh, they went, hey, look, that's great. We can use this. They've then developed their own apps. They've um, uh, used our APIs to plug into the data sets that we've got. And now, for the volunteer community across Canberra, there's a wealth of data that they've got. They can tell when the, um, the toilets, where the toilets are and when they're open. They can see the quality of our sidewalks. Uh, they can see where the local dog parks are. They, they, they've got a whole wealth of information uh, that has been exposed. None of that information was exposed uh, for open data's sake, though. It was exposed as part of an overarching process to improve our data management practices. It was exposed because the organisation found it better to, to do it than to not do it. It wasn't because we wanted to be more transparent. It wasn't because we thought we wanted to be more accountable. It wasn't even because we cared about the community particularly. But the community was able to help itself and the community was able to do it by default. So just in closing, um, 
for me, uh, you know, I'd, I'd like to see people go away and think not how we're going to um, uh, create another uh, great uh, hack fest. I'd like to see uh, people go away from this and think with them. How am I going to help those, uh, those data owners? And how am I going to help um, the organisation for which I work? Uh, and once I've done that, then I know I'll have uh, um, helped the community at large. Thank you. <laughs>